Hey guys, it has been a minute since I hopped on YouTube to film another tutorial, but we are back from kind of enjoying a laid back summer and we're coming back inside and kind of getting ready for fall. And we've just been working on a lot of templates and kind of really expanding out our different branding sets so that you can build a cohesive brand from start to finish. So you can kind of have all the different templates that you need to go together to really create that cohesive brand you've been dreaming about without all the work and have like most of the design and layout done for you. So you can just customize it to exactly what you're looking for. So that is what I've been up to, but I see you guys have a lot of requests for different tutorials in the comments. So I'm gonna go through all those and definitely put those on the list to make as we go into the fall. But for today, we are going to look at how to make an email in Canva and using other email platforms again, and just a little bit of a different twist on that using our email kit for Canva. But you totally do not have to. You can create your own email headers and like body pieces and different beautiful designs that you can use within your emails that work with any drag and drop builder, which is going to be pretty much any email platform available today from like Constant Contact, MailChimp, MailerLite, Klaviyo, um, Flowdesk. There are so many. I don't even know. I can't think of the names of any other ones. They're like on the tip of my tongue. ConvertKit. I think that's another one that has a drag and drop editor. I haven't personally used it. But pretty much if you can take an image block and insert it into an email, you'd be able to use this method and like this video might be helpful to you to learn how to do that and how to set up your email to look beautiful and function as well. And we're going to emphasize the function because I don't want to see people creating a full email blast of just images. That's never a good idea, so we're not going to advocate that here. But we're going to use some beautiful branded images to give our email a unique and beautiful flair that will like pop out in inboxes and look a little different than the same old standard bland email. So we're gonna go through how to do that in MailChimp, uh, MailerLite, and Klaviyo. Why? Because they have free accounts or free trials and other platforms didn't really have that where I could sign up to show you, but I promise you they all work the same. Like if you look through help articles, any availability to like insert an image block and link it somewhere is all you're gonna need to be able to do this. So I will go ahead and we will jump right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into our template. And again, this is our template that you can purchase on our website. I will leave the link down below, but you absolutely do not need this template to create an email this way. This just makes it a lot easier for you to do so because there are a bunch of different layouts kind of pre-established here. So we'll just pick one for the sake of this video. I mean, this welcome email right here. Now say that we got this all set, we already customized it. We could put a different image in if we wanted to. So once you find an image you like, you can just go ahead and drag that in. You can customize the colors of this to whatever you want it to be. You know, I might not pick that color, but you can go ahead and choose something to match your own branding. And maybe just change this to match our own branding. All right. So this might not be the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my life, but it's gonna work for this tutorial. So once we get this all set to how we'd like, and like I said, you can make your own of this in Canva pretty easily. The size we have here is 1000 by 1385, and that's just the size that we've chosen for this but you'll be able to resize it to anything you want. Just make sure you get the resolution like good enough, usually about a thousand pixels wide. I know MailChimp has a 1200 pixel wide max limit before they give you a little message that says it'll obliterate inboxes. And you don't wanna do that. You want to resize them so that they're properly going to fit into people's inboxes because you want to make sure you stay within best practices and you don't make your images way too big to load. So once you've got your image all set in Canva, we can go ahead and share that. And I'm gonna start with MailChimp, just because that'll be the first one that we're gonna look at. And if you go back to my very first video, most popular video, it shows you how to connect MailChimp and Canva. So the menu looks a little bit different now because they've updated it. 
but you can still find it here under more and then it is down under messaging now it's kind of a weird category it's not really anything to do with messaging but that is where canva has chosen to put mailchimp so we're going to go ahead and click on that Then once this loads, we've already connected our account again. I will link that video down below as well so that you can go ahead and watch that if you're not sure how to connect it. And the menu's changed just a little, so you should be able to navigate through and find it still. So we're gonna uncheck, um, actually we are gonna check that. We're gonna uncheck all the other pages. I don't know why it's making me do it individually. It usually has like a menu to uncheck everything, but I guess it doesn't in MailChimp. So we just want our page four or our current page here because that's our blue image. And we will hit done and save and it's gonna just send that straight into MailChimp so that we can use it in our campaign. We get to skip saving it on our computer, which is super helpful for speeding up the process of content creation and not having so much crap and files stored on our computer, which I know for me is a major issue and I'm sure it is for you too. So now that this is all set, we're gonna go ahead and navigate over to our MailChimp. All right, so we are over in our MailChimp now and you can have a free or paid account to do this. I have a paid account, so I probably have a few more options here of what I can build than you might if you have the free account but i know everyone has like the basic one column so we will just go ahead and select that one for the purposes of this video and we'll just wait for it to load okay and this is just loading our basic template our logo is in here it's like always in here when we load a template then we just got a basic text block our social media and the required footer so that's the only thing in here we're going to want to go ahead and grab the image block and just drag it. Make sure we don't put it in the header. See how they're labeled header, body, and footer. We want to make sure we put it in the body just so we make sure we keep things organized and keep best practices. So now we've got this image block in here and we're just going to be able to go straight in and upload an image. We're going to load our image collection. And we're going to be able to see that our template we sent over from Canva should be right in here. And there is our image. It came right on in from Canva. So we will go ahead and insert it into our campaign. And that is one of the first uses of our template and how we can start out with our campaign. And now each of these only has one call to action because you can only link it to one web page. So you're just going to want to go in and hit link and you can link this anywhere you want to. You could do it to a PDF download. You can do it once you like have the link uploaded to your website. You can do it to a product, to a page on your website, to a landing page, to a page on someone else's website, any URL in the world, to even an email address, anchor link, like I said, a file in MailChimp, you can do a survey. So you'll just be able to go ahead and link that up so that when people click on it, they will be able to go to where you've specified. I also like to make sure that I fill in this alt text. This will tell you what it is. And it's good to go ahead and know what this is and go ahead and use it. And this is basically if your image does not show up, you want people to know what they're seeing anyways, in case their email client isn't gonna load that image. So this is a good example here. It says what this image would be if they could see it, just in case they can't see it for whatever reason, you always want to put something here. And let's just go ahead and put something right there. That works. So the next thing we would want to do to continue building this campaign is we can use whatever drag and drop editor. This is MailChimp. I'll show you how to do this in Klaviyo and in a mailer light and then you can use this in any email platform that has a drag and drop editor and allows you to link out images you can use an image from canva to make an email and it's pretty straightforward on how to do that as long as you have the ability to add an image and link it which if your email platform doesn't have that ability you need a new email platform so 
just because those are free accounts that I can create and use is why I'll be showing you in there, but you can technically use this in any email platform. You could even just use it in a regular Gmail or email, although I don't recommend sending out your emails that way. But if you have a use for it and it makes sense to you, then it's definitely possible to do that. So you can use whatever your drag and drop editor has available to you to keep creating. You can put a divider in and I would definitely recommend just to stick with best practices again, that you do use some text, like regular text in your email, not just the text on top of the image. It's absolutely okay to do that in some cases, but if you use like a hundred images in here, it might just be too image heavy. And if none of those images load in your customer's inboxes, you might run into issues with just your email being annoying or frustrating, but it definitely speeds up the time to create like a header graphic or something flashy that to open up a promotional email and make it look just more engaging. So I put a good blend of different types of content in your email just to make sure that people can open it and it's not too heavy. So we can go on creating using our drag and drop editor that way. And my computer is being ridiculously slow right now, but you get the point, like that should drag and drop in there pretty easily. So if you do grab one of these Canva templates, they're also gonna come with these small sections that you can use within your email. And these are just for if you want something a little bit more fun in the email than what your drag and drop editor is going to give you, I would go ahead and use one of these. So I can change the colors. So in order to get my color, I'd go up here and click on this like add a new color so I can get this is our hex code. It's a six digit code for pretty much every single color you can imagine. I'll go ahead and copy it and I can go ahead and do the same thing on my new document, paste it, and then I get the color that I want. And I'll do that again with this as well. It makes it easy to make sure that we get exactly the matching colors between documents. And then I will put a new image in here. Maybe I make candles. I don't know, but that's just what we're going to do for the sake of this video. We're going to go ahead and make candles and maybe we would upload our own photo if we had it to use in our emails. And we would just do that right here under uploads and upload files, but we're just going to use a stock photo for right now. But this one looks like it's good with our color tones. You know, it kind of matches. It looks realistic. It looks like I'm selling candles and I'm making an email for it. So again, I'll go ahead and share that. I'm going to go to more and down to messaging and MailChimp so that I can send it straight there. Again, usually it has a box to uncheck everything instead of having to manually do it like this, but we're just going to leave the page that we want checked page 10 and we're going to just send that straight to MailChimp so we can keep building our campaign in there. I'm back in my MailChimp and I'm just going to put another image block down here below my text and I'm going to upload an image, but it's already going to be in here as we can see. I'm just going to go ahead and insert it. Obviously I'm going to write something that is not this text. And then I am also going to link that out to another place on my website. And then maybe I want to add something else to this campaign. And again, if I want to change a little bonus for you, if, if I want to change the color of this background to match this color I've used in Canva, I can go get that hex code again. There it is. And then I can go back in here and I can insert it. If I just didn't accidentally hit copy instead of paste. So I'll go right in there and insert it. And then I get like this same color block in here and I can change my text color as well to black, change my size to be bigger and change my font to match better with what's in my email platform. I'm not sure what font that is, but whatever I want. <laughs> and then I can continue to build my campaign. Just a pro tip, do not make your campaign too long. I see a lot of people making ridiculously long campaigns and just no one's really going to read all that. So make sure you're keeping things concise, make sure you're focusing on one or two buttons and they maybe go to the same place 
and the calls to action lead people into one place that is the purpose of that piece of content, the purpose of that email, and you're not offering you know, a hundred different places where somebody can go to the point where they're feeling confused and overwhelmed and they don't click on anything and they delete your email. So that is just a little tip while we're in here as well. Say that we're done with this email. It looks fabulous. We're ready to send it. Then we can go ahead and continue with our sending in MailChimp and we are done with that campaign. So next up, I will show you how to make that same campaign using MailerLite and then we'll go into Klaviyo. So unfortunately for using other email platforms, Canva doesn't have a direct integration with them. As you can see, there's not any way to send them to another email platform. So we're gonna have to go ahead and download them to our computer, unfortunately. There's a lot of things in here, but I don't see any other email platform besides MailChimp yet. So instead of that, we're gonna have to go ahead and download our item instead, which is the first option. And you can go ahead and use a PNG or you can use a JPEG just if you want the file to be a little smaller, probably better for inboxes. And you can leave all the standard things right here. And then you just wanna see here, you can uncheck. So it's looking for in the MailChimp, you can uncheck all pages and then you can select current page. If that's the page you're on in Canva, so you don't have to scroll down, they made it a little easier. Just make sure the page number matches. You're getting the right one. Hit done and then hit download. And you can wait for that to go ahead and ask you where you want to save it. Then while we're here, we'll go ahead and save this small one to this page 10. So we'll just download that. Do a JPEG. Uncheck all pages. Just grab our current page 10 and download it and save it in the same way. So once we're done with that, we will go right into our Miller Lite. I've started up a campaign here. It's very much the same as any other drag and drop editor, very predictable. You're gonna have your logo and your header up here. You're gonna have your words and your text, and then you are going to have your image. And they already kind of have one in here. So it's simple enough to just be able to grab a new one. So I can go ahead and click on it and upload my images from my desktop. I'll just put both because why waste our time? Might as well get them both in there at the same time. And we will wait for them to load and then we'll be able to use them in our email. All right, so we've got our images in here. The top one we want to use is this, so we'll hit select. It'll go ahead and replace that stock image with our image. You can go ahead and delete these if you want, if you want to have an alternative headline up there, you can keep it. And you've already got your call to action right here, so we can delete that as well. And we'll just go ahead and enter the URL of wherever we want this to go. We probably want it to open in a new tab. And again, adding in our alt text is great. Just in case that image doesn't load. So again, I would not use all images for the email. I would use some of these different blocks and designs that they have to create a little layout and keep your email using some text and using something different as well. All right, so say we want it down here, we find another image block and just drag it in there. And then we can just go ahead and browse for our image. It should already be here because we already put the small image in it is so we can go ahead and select that and then our image is inside of our email and we can connect it again to, and put our alt text in and then we're all set with that and we can put any other kind of block that we want to in here to go with our site so when you are done with that, of course, again, you would want to like make sure your fonts match, make sure that your text is matching, everything's customized exactly how you want it. And then you'd be able to go ahead and continue on with your email campaign. So that is it for MailerLite. And next we will look into Klaviyo as our last option. So now I'm in my Klaviyo account and I can choose to use the classic or the new editor. 
I'm just gonna use the new one. It really doesn't matter. They're not that different. Whereas if you didn't know how to use the new one, you'd be totally lost from using the old one. Drag and drop is pretty self-explanatory. It is not that difficult to figure out how to use any drag and, drag and drop editor, I would say. So they're all gonna have a lot of the same components. So for this, we are going to wanna edit this and we're gonna wanna take away this section. So we're not really gonna be using it and we can just put an image right here. Then we will go to our image library and I've uploaded our image in here. We'll just select it and it'll be right there just like anything else. And we can add our link address in here and our alt text. And then again, you'll want to use other blocks. You can use text and other images in here, just kind of like they have it. And we'll go ahead and replace this image with our small image. Put it right in there. And it should just replace that. There we go. Perfect. And we can again add our link and our alt text in there. And you can go ahead and add in other things in here if you want to. And you really should. Like I was saying earlier, you want to make sure that you do use other dynamic elements. Obviously, you're going to have to connect to your website. Mine's still connected. It is. So you will want to go in and connect your website in there. These are just samples. When you preview it, it would look correct. But that is how you'll be able to go ahead and use these templates inside any drag and drop editor just to make it a little bit more unique and colorful and maybe fit your brand a little bit better and have elements throughout your emails of images that aren't just the same old thing that everybody else is going to have. So another thing that you can do, this is Klaviyo. I think like Flowdesk has this kind of capability too, to make like an image go as part of like a, a header section here where the actual text and button can be on the image rather than part of the image. So it's even better for deliverability and better for best practices of having like the actual text not be part of the image if possible. So you could go ahead in your Canva, go back, and maybe we just want to take all this out and we're going to put it in like in the actual email. We're able to do that as well. We would just want to download it and save it the same way. And we'll choose just our current page. And we'll get that and upload that into our Playview. So as you can see, I took that blank image without anything under it and I put it into Clavio and you'll have to go in and play with the padding of these. So you can select like this, this call to action here and you'll have to go in and like see what happens. Like that looks like it's pretty good, but then it's cut off up here. So you'll want to click on the section and this is the section padding. So maybe we can make that more. Like now that's not getting cut off and we're having a little bit better luck getting it in there properly. So you'll have to play around with these settings and try to get it correct and how you want it to look. And it might take you a minute to get it exactly how you want. Okay, so with the right combination of fixing the section padding and making sure my section was aligned to the top, see like we don't want it aligned like center, we want to align it top and then fix our padding from there until we get this where we want and then we can actually put our headline right in here we can change our font and we can upload fonts in Clavio if we don't have like the font that we want in here already but I am just gonna pick something that we do have see I have uploaded a couple fonts in there I don't know we're just gonna go ahead and pick something nobody said it was gonna be really really good but it's just going to be for the purposes of showing how to do this and then we can go ahead and customize our button again we're going to want to go into canva grab our color that we're going to want our button to be and we can just put it right in there 
I'll put it in here. There it is. And we can choose our corner radius, which is how round the button is. We probably want to get rid of that so that we can tie in with, oh, I don't have it under there. We can tie in with what we had in our branding for these, they'll the square buttons. Then I can go ahead and choose my button padding. I can do full width so that the button was a little wider or I can fit it to the text. Then I can go ahead and choose my font for the button. I like to add some letter spacing in because it will match our branding here. And we can go ahead and change the color. Let's just go straight over to black or not. Close enough for this. And we can go ahead and up the size a little of that call to action. And now we have our pretty much our graphic, except our button and our headline are actually coded right into the email rather than on the image. So that, if you're feeling really pro level and confident in your abilities, I would definitely recommend doing that over having the text in the image. But for the sake of making a really nice campaign and having an engaging image, you can totally keep the text in the image, but I would not recommend including zero text in your email. So you want to use the images sparingly to add really beautiful branding to your emails. You don't want to use them to obliterate like a thousand page newsletter that explodes people's inboxes. So just keep that rule of thumb in mind as you're designing your emails in any drag and drop editor. Thank you for watching guys. Hopefully that video was helpful for you to understand how to use images and kind of add cool image headers or body pieces into your email to make them a little bit unique while still maintaining some email best practices of including other blocks and text into our emails. I will include the link to the email kit that I used and others like it in the description box down below. And you can always save using the code YouTube10 on anything in the shop from watching these videos. Just enter that code at checkout to get 10% off of any item, including these email kits. You absolutely do not need them, but if you're just drawing a blank as to how to lay out anything cool. These might help you just save a lot of time. There's 40 templates that you can use to create all different kinds of layouts. Use them over and over again, rip them apart, put them back together, get creative, and just maybe they'll help spark some ideas so that you're not just staring at a blank screen because nobody wants that. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more templates like this. And let me know what else you want to see down in the comments. Like I said, got a lot of comments kind of in the last few weeks about different things you guys wanted to see so i'll be working on making those videos for you and just let me know what else you want to see and what's been new with you thank you guys i will see you in the next video bye